One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. So, what's up, guys? I'm James Hake. This is the Hake Report, and it is the fourth hour of Jesse Lee Peterson's stream. And I have some issues to present to you, guys. 9 a.m. Tuesday, October 1st. It's the first of the month. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> um, so, you know... I just saw a story for the first time on the Jesse Lee Peterson show that was insane. And I wonder what you guys would do if you were in this cop's position when this black commissioner, like, he, he abused his position. I don't know what they were doing. If they were at a ceremony, it looked like they were inside of a court building or something. A courtroom or something. I wasn't really paying that much attention, and then I hear this... Black guy verbally abusing the police officer. <laughs> Probably not too different from how he did, how he acted when he was getting arrested or something. He claimed that he was uh, arrested under false pretenses and I believe you're a rogue officer and stuff like that. That is so inappropriate for a, a person in a position of power to do. And talk about a grudge, right? The cop doesn't even remember this guy. <laughs> And then the black guy is seething this whole time, and he recognizes this cop, and then he calls him out and calls him a rogue officer and all that stuff. Probably not even true. Almost, like, undoubtedly not even true. And what would you, what are you supposed to do in that position as that cop? Yeah, that's utter, utter disrespect. That is so evil. So I may want to try to, like, recover that story, Joel, if, um... I'm going to steal it from Jesse's producer. But I want to also talk about the um, conservatives infighting over some, you know, some of the, some conservatives are kind of standard thinking. They, they fall for the notion of racism and anti-Semitism and stuff like that, which don't, neither of which exist, but they fall for it. And so they don't realize it, but they're liberals. And then some of the conservatives that know not to care about that stuff they get mad at them and by being mad at them they get become liberals too so there's like a whole bunch of infighting and division going on it's so evil and i showed you you guys joel showed you guys a couple of screenshots of this story from that right wing watch you know the far left nasty filthy organization it doesn't even belong in the country just uh it's basically a smear, a leftist smear outlet. And j this guy, it's, I think it's run in part by this guy, Jared Holt, who calls himself an investigative reporter. Young guy. Um, and anyways, it's ridiculous. And, um, you know, I and Jesse Lee Peterson and others, it seems like we're kind of outsiders. We're not really in with any of these groups, these conservative groups that are kind of attacking each other after uh, Right Wing Watch stirred up a bunch of trouble. And a few of them fell for it. Um, and I'm kind of glad for that. But um, it's crazy. There, There's like this scaremongering about white, anything white related to white hate. Anti-Semitism, especially from whites, right? so-called, and uh, racism from whites, as if it's even remotely, remotely a problem. It, the only reason that it's a problem, because there have been, like, shootings, right, um, terrorist attacks, terror attacks by some whites on, like, some Jewish places, whatever. The only reason it's a problem is because of this type of scaremongering and anti-white stuff going on. That's why whites feel like they have to be terrorists inside their own country. It's ridiculous. But they don't, the so-called conservatives don't want to face that fact. And they don't want you to even, quote-unquote, fraternize with them. 
and it's a mess. And the picture is, <laughs> anyway, so shallow. Um, and then I want to talk, if I can, about these stupid liberal opinions on impeachment. Both the fake news, like AP, Associated Press, trash outlet. They have some good factual information that comes out, but it's all, most of it's cast. They're, you know, they're activists. They're pro-feminist, anti-Trump, um, environment, radical environmentalist, which is to say commie, communist, um, outlet. Very far left. And there's others, New York Times. And I was reading the news today, and it was throwing me off how bad and how, um, how uh, biased, plainly biased, their so-called reporting is. The way that they cast things and frame things. About how Trump is um, ranting about, like, AP said some line like, at one end of Pennsylvania Avenue, the president is raged about treason. Which is what it kind of is, really. Referring to the whistleblower and all these people, and maybe even um, little Adam Schiff, making up stuff about Trump and pretending that it's valid and legitimate. At the other, the methodical march toward impeachment proceeded apace. So basically they're trying to pretend like Trump is this wild guy who's out of control, and meanwhile these Democrats are being so methodical and, and doing right. Stupid. So AP's writing is ridiculous. And that's why I specifically named those, these writers Jonathan Lemire, M-L-E-M-I-R-E, -E, Matthew V. Lee, Mary Clark Jalo Jalonik, and Emily Swanson. And I called them beta males and liberal women. Writing for AP, pretending that they're being um, objective, which they're not. And meanwhile, on the other side, you see, you hear people like the Daily Beast um, reporting about liberals, liberal um, reporters and stuff at the Hill. You know, the Hill is a pretty far left outlet, to be honest. They claim that it's right leaning. Leaning. They have one guy who's been on Hannity's show on La Fox News, and he was he a, a, an article of his was retweeted by President Trump. Real Donald Trump. Follow him on Twitter. And you can follow me on Twitter at The Hake Report, by the way. Yeah. And Jesse at JLP Talk. But this guy, John Solomon, I mentioned him yesterday, I think. And I may have mentioned him Sunday, too. He reported several interesting facts. And he's an investigative journalist. The real kind, not like, not the smear kind like that guy on Right Wing Watch. But John Solomon of The Hill... He's like an opinion writer, I guess, but he's also a um, investigative journalist, and he's done a lot of stories. He's kind of exposed um, the corruption inside the government, and he he wrote about how Joe Biden, and it, I told you it was a couple months. It was weeks. Joe Biden, weeks after he was named by President Obama, then President Obama, in 2015. The New York Times reported that um, Joe Biden was named uh, the guy by Obama to deal with Ukraine. Weeks later, within weeks, that Ukraine oil company or whatever type of company that was hired Hunter Biden to be there on their board. Within weeks. Isn't that interesting? And they were under investigation. They were indeed under investigation. Even when... Um, even when Joe Biden pressured Ukraine to fire this investigator, their lead investigator of Ukraine, or one of their investigators of Ukraine, that was investigating the company that Hunter Biden was in, on. Interesting. And they falsely stated that it was not under investigation anymore. One of the aspects of the investigation was closed, but there were two other aspects, including corruption, that was still going on. So it's just interesting. And these people with these fake opinions, dumb opinions like, oh, impeachment wouldn't lead to civil war because most evangelicals would agree with it by that point if we got enough people in the Senate to support it. As if, you know, as if people are even fond of Congress and the Senate whatsoever anyways, most people are, the country is very divided. 
and the people who even are congressmen and female congressmen and senators, they are not making the people happy on either side. So why, why does he think that it would be that? Why does he think that the senators would be representative of the people? That's some guy writing that on Bloomberg Opinion, far left outlet. Ramesh Ponuru claimed that. He claimed that if we got 67 senators prepared to impeach, then it would mean that many millions of evangelicals who voted for Trump approved it. Dumb. So, and I'm still not falling, falling, by the way, for these Hong Kong protests. Somebody got shot. They called him a protester, but he was hitting the officer with a, with a, like a rod, a metal rod, a little metal stick thing. They called it a baton. He was swinging at the officer. The officer had his hand out like this, and uh, it like kind of grazed his his sleeve. Maybe got him, and he and he shot him, boom, in the chest, and he fell. And there's video of it. And it looks like the guy got what was coming to him. Open your eyes, Asian. There's, he had a gun. That's not racist, is it? Anyways, I'll get to some calls. But first, let me, pr- let me present this story from, that, I, that I'm stealing. From Nick and Jesse. The clip is ready to play, but... Let me just, let me just start from the beginning of it. That's gross. Okay, Florida City Commissioner ambushes a deputy, verbally ambushes a deputy at a ceremony. A Florida politician couldn't resist the urge, this is, uh, this is, um, Nick's writing, very good writer. To confront an officer that he says booked him on false charges four years ago. Four years ago, like this cop, like this cop is prepared to defend himself. Not, so it's very unfair. It's from the Daily Mail. Right when the officer was getting an award for excellence in policing. (laughs) Wow, I didn't know that part. I wasn't paying attention. You know, I was getting ready. Um, So... The arrest report states from four years ago that the officer advised Galen, that's this commissioner, city commissioner, to move back and that Galen wouldn't comply. All charges were dropped against Galen, which is frequent. That's frequent. So um, they, he claimed that's false pretenses, under false pretenses. Watch this video of this. He's getting an award for excellence in policing, and this is how the black guy acts towards the officer who's getting an award for excellence in policing. Evil! Watch. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Gallardo? My, it's my line. Can you come down for a second? Gallardo, that's Hispanic. It's good to see you again. You probably don't remember me, but you're the police officer who falsely arrested me four years ago. You lied on the police report. I believe you're He's a rogue nodding. police officer, you're a bad police officer, and you don't deserve to be here. <laughs> Does he like already know how this guy is? That is so ridiculous. Joshua Gallardo. Probably no relation to AJ Gallardo, the r- guy who wrote the original The Hake Report song. But I think the real pronunciation is Gallardo. But these guys are white Hispanics or Americanized Hispanics. And, um,. I guess that officer did... What would you do in that situation? That is so ridiculous. And this is why, um, you know, blacks are into education. So-called education as the way to come up or something like that. And this is why this education is not enough. Because that's not actual education. Education is when you actually know how to act towards people. This... Black city commissioner does not know how to act towards people. That is, I don't know who would think well of this officer for doing that, except for the radicals who um, already hate the cops and hate white people. And to, to be honest, they hate black people. They just don't, they pretend to love black people. 
That is so crazy and wrong and evil. Like, that's so shocking that he would do that. I wonder if he just has a history of this, so this cop kind of knows how this guy is. I don't know. That's wild. So if you have a better idea than how this officer acted, <laughs> Joel talk, Joel or Jesse talked about giving him the finger. But, um, I don't think they would do that. But, uh, that is nuts. That is... Well, I mean, he can't do anything, I guess. But, evil people, like, like Jesse said, um, <laughs> like Jesse said, South Africa, that's kind of like South Africa. These people do not belong in positions of power, but yet yeah, here they are, and now they're just making a mockery of their positions of power. It's kind of like Obama. He made a mockery of the presidency. And of America, to be honest. So Florida, you should be ashamed, or that city should definitely be ashamed for letting that guy get in there. I don't know how they're... Are they elected city commissioners? I think they are. Shame on the voters. Vincent out of North Carolina. How are you doing? Vincent! Hey, James, hi. Hey, what's up? Hey, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Do you remember we talked before? No. <laughs> Never ask a white man if he remembers. Okay. Do, do white people have memory loss or something? No, it's just, you know, I talk to a lot of people. And, okay. uh, but, uh, I was, you know, I'm playing. Sure, I got you. Um, do you, I guess, uh, I had a few questions. So I'm just going to kind of run through them. Is that okay? You can give me one and then we can go from there. Okay, well, okay, sure. Uh, do you support an ethno state? Huh, yeah, sure. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, why not? Um, um, do you, well, so do you support, do you support, uh, I guess, America being a white country again? Yeah, majority white anyways. Okay. It'd be, you. you know, you have to do things right now. Like, we're in, the, we're in this position. The, you know, 1965 made a mistake. And maybe I even heard that George Washington was, and this is just what I heard, I'm only repeating it because it's just an interesting point. He was for, um, you know, people coming in to get, you know, work. He needed workers, basically. And uh, by people, I mean other races, I guess. Well, who, who, was, so behind the 1960, who was behind 1965, Jim? Um, I know that Kennedy had his name on it. And one of, the, one of those Kennedys, right? And yeah, who's, we're, we're, you're talking about the hard seller. Right? Hard seller, yeah. The immigration Something man? like that, yeah. Yeah. So you don't know who's Emanuel Seller? Emanuel who? Seller. Seller? Emmanuel Hart Seller. Se okay, so that was a... Are you, okay. Emanuel Seller. I heard of it. Hart Seller. So Emanuel Seller? Okay, cool. I didn't know his first name. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a Jewish person. Of course. Most of them are liberals. Seems, I mean, it seems like, James, these Jews... And I don't know how you feel about the Jews. I, I'm sure you support Israel. I'm sure Jesse supports Israel. Mm -hmm. Although Israel has engaged in many crimes. Uh, and the I, don't Jewish people have, I don't know that to be true. I don't know that to be true. Maybe maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Do you support Israel? What's that? Do you support Israel? Yeah. Do you? Okay. No. Why not? Um. Of I think Israel is a criminal. Uh. I guess. Territory, I guess a country. I don't even know if I consider it a country. But there's a million reasons. The U.S. has liberty. What they're doing to Palestinians. They the U.S. On the U.S. says liberty. He's naming is is um some boat that supposedly Israelis shot and sank of America. I know some America's boat that's shot and sank. And I don't know, really know the story, but that's what he's referring to with that. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. Okay. Well, I don't know, James. Like, do you see how the Jewish people are operating the media? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you agree that it's in a villainous fashion? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. But you you think we should just not 
you think we should just not consume the media? That's your solution, right? I remember that was what you said the last time we talked. Um, that would definitely help. You can, like, there's lots of things that people can be doing to combat the fake news that's been putting out. And that's one of those, that's one of the things, definitely, is, or if you, I mean, just don't give them any money or play. And, um, yeah. And then speak out against them. Have the, have the spirit of the freedom of speech by doing that. Like you speak out in the tr in real truth and in real like real love, and then you show the contrast of their fake love and their um, their hate. But the problem is that you guys that are getting mad at the Jews, and we all can relate, right? We're, we get mad at the media. N same thing. It's just that you're mad no. at the Jews. You're hey, mad at the, the media. I don't think that's the that's the. Different things, but okay. No, it's the same thing. If you if you're mad at somebody, then it's the same thing. Well, people who say they're mad at the media are like people who say like, "Oh, I'm mad at liberals." Or, I'm mad right? At liberals. Yeah, there's, it's it's yeah, the same. Between... No, but I'm telling my my point is my point is I'm telling you it's the same anger that undermines the conservatives, the good guys. The good guys lose. The so-called good guys, right? Because are the conservatives the good guys? I'm telling you, like, I'm telling you, I'm lumping you in as part of the so-called good guys, right? So okay. the, the, let's say the Jew blamers are part of the good guys and the, the conservatives are supposed to be part of the good, good guys. All of them are useful idiots as long as they're angry and being used and supported. They're supporting the Jews by being angry at the Jews. You're supporting the people that you hate. You're, you're, you're supporting your brother's fellow children of Satan, because yeah, you're a child of Satan, this. and they're children of Satan. I remember you made this point the last yeah, time. Yeah, I, I vaguely I remember was, your, your conversation is coming back to me, too. I thought that this was ridiculous, how we're... So you don't, so you don't see how, how your anger undermines your own cause? No, when I say that, that Jewish people should be put in prison... No, but I'm, telling, I'm, making, a, I'm making a larger point. You don't see that okay. your anger undermines your own self and cause and life. No, no. You don't see all. that. Okay. All yeah, right. I, just, yeah, because that's angry. that's really what Jesse is about, and that's what what why I like him so much, is because yeah. when he I mean, talks Jesse's politics, hurt. hold on. When he talks politics, he talks about right versus wrong, and then it's he puts it in spiritual terms, right versus wrong. But you're just about you're not about right versus wrong. You're about politics. Because yeah. you think that anger is good. Yeah, well, I mean, Jesse is just, you know, I guess he, um, he does the whole moral, morality thing. And, of course, I don't, I'm not religious. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I don't you know a lot of people. Jesse's Christian morality of what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the man in the sky said so. Were you raised Christian? No. Really? You were raised atheist no. or what? Uh, yeah, I never went. I've never been to church. So. Wow. You had both parents growing up? Uh, yep. yep. Did, did you used to be liberal at one point? Uh, yes, I did. Yep. Ah, you know, so many of the alt-right used to be liberal. And I think, uh, I think that's why... What's that? Go ahead. I think the conservatives are worse than the liberals in so many cases. There, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. I will, uh, you know, the cowardice, the hypocrisy... I mean, the climate change, the Second Amendment, the Constitution. Are you an eco fascist? <laughs> well, I mean, do you believe in climate change or? Not man made. No, I don't buy the man made thing. Okay. You don't think we're, we're having any effect on the environment? I don't know how much of an effect we are. I've, it's never been proven to, to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, have you seen the, that the UN? Have you seen that the UN is suppressing the dissent amongst the scientific community? Well, a, a lot of it, a lot of it is made up because they want you know, to push. They're trying to push, a, trying to push globalist. They're trying to push globalist socialism. You do see that. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, but but I definitely think we are, you know, changing the environment. So you course. think conservatives are bad for the environment? <laughs> Worse yeah, well, than the? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, then how come, for... how come the worst uh, polluters are all, like, socialist areas, such as, you know, 
places filled with these immigrants and stuff like that, they're polluters. And then you have, um, like, commie China and all that. Yeah, well, the... the but I'm the talking about, like, these local like, areas, you know, these local areas where they're a um, bunch of liberals. Homelessness, they're, they're polluting. I heard a story. Jesse told me a story, so it must be true, but I haven't confirmed it independently. That down in um, San Diego area, and you can guys can look this up, let me know, but the homeless people have been, you know... Using, doing their homeless things, you know, going to the bathroom in inappropriate places. And so people are getting sick from drinking the water down there. And that's a result of that liberalism. And I know that well, you're not, you're not no, sympathetic well, to allowing the homeless people to run wild, but I'm just giving you an example of conservative areas don't allow these homeless people to go wild and stuff like that. And that's better well, for the environment. No, no. That's not a wall. <laughs> and these immigrants Why? coming in, the, they're the ones littering all over the place. They're the reason yeah. that we are have these non-plastic straws, <laughs> paper straws. Are you being serious? Yeah. Are you joking? Do you, who do you think would do more for the environment? Con, the conservative party or, the, or the, the Republican party or the Democratic party? Trump. <laughs> you, think, you think Trump would do more he's for the already, environment? Yeah, than? he's doing more for the environment. Yeah. The capitalism okay. is better. Uh, not glo- know, not globalist idea. capitalism. It has to be fair trade, free trade, and fair trade, as Trump would say. <laughs> anyway, man, it's pretty interesting yeah, talking can... with you. Do call me I again. Capital... Do call me again, okay. man. I have to okay, move on. Right. Though. Okay, all right. But I definitely enjoyed talking with you. Very interesting. Yeah, it was fun. All right, all right. take care, man. Bye. Um, let me get to Steve out of Los Angeles, California. How are you, Steve? Ink report. <laughs> Hey. Hey, what's up, Hake? Not much. How about you? How are you doing? Doing fine, doing thank well. you. Right on. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about these rhinos on Twitter. Are you talking about the story that I touched on very briefly without getting into detail? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fired up about the story, but I don't want to ruin it for your listeners if you're going to talk about it. Okay, well, um, yeah, let me let me present it because... I'm trying to avoid naming too many names, right? So, Right Wing Watch covered this story of some conservative woman. And I'm going to let Steve, and Steve comment on this. He may know a little bit more than me. But, you know, I'm just trying to avoid putting out people's names because I'm just not interested in getting into the drama. But I want to point it out and maybe we can get some lessons from it, maybe. I don't know. She got ousted from her position on a prominent conservative group organization, right? And yeah. you can look into the story and see who it, who it was. She, after she took a, a photo, a group photo alongside a, a white Hispanic alt-right type of host. Um, and he, good guy, I th- you know, he has interviewed Jesse. I don't know much about him. Somebody, some more standard conservative quoted him as saying something nasty about, you know, so that people call anti-Semitic. It was kind of a nasty statement about... Uh, more standard conservative and never Trump type of a conservative guy who, um, you know, he's basically just an insult. But it's a pretty nasty insult. But they, you know, it's one of those taboo insults because it was so-called anti-Semitic. And the ex-alt-right guy, Baked Alaska, was in this photo. Baked Alaska who appeared on The Fallen State one time. He used to be alt-right. I don't know where he is ide- ideologi- ideologically now. He used to be a Black Lives Matter supporter. Speaking of, like, alt-right guys being former liberals. And um, this black, and I think he's black and Arab, Ali Alexander, the guy in the, the guy <laughs> with his arms around the girls, two girls, two yeah, ladies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's a decent guy. He's kind of emotional, but I, I really, um, I like him. He's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show before. And let's see. And some, several others. You see one, like, this Asian um, woman, young woman, who is, like, sort of conservative. And some more other people. So, like, these, these standard mainstream conservatives condemned this group picture, saying, oh, this one conservative young woman who got ousted from this organization over this, fired, um... Said, condemned 
taking that group photo as fraternizing with racists and anti-Semites. And I don't know about any of you, but I can't bring myself to take it seriously when somebody refers to a person as racist or anti-Semite. I can't even really take it seriously as when they're attacking, um, you know, the guy that hates whites and Jews, um, Louis Farrakhan. He hates blacks, too, because he hates. He's angry. He's evil. Um, so they, they're condemning this as racist and anti-Semite. Who cares, right? I mean, you have the right to hang out with whoever you want to hang out with, and you, you don't know the context. You don't know just how fraternizing it was, and it's not your business anyways. Um, this group, I guess, has the right to fire her, whatever. But... Um, so right wing watch is the ones tr trying to like destroy these people and they're going along with them because they fall for the false racism thing, false anti-Semitism thing, rather than having the spirit of the freedom of speech. Um, you have the right to hate. Everybody hates. <laughs> Just because um, this guy happens, one of these guys said something hateful about Jew people. Now it's evil, all of a sudden more evil, because he so-called hates a group of people. But there was a Jewish guy in there, which is beside the point. There was a Jewish guy, um, who's that young guy? Show the picture again. Maybe his name will come to me. He appeared at our men's conference. He's the one in the upper right corner. Um, uh, Jacob, Jacob oh, Wall. Am I still on? Jacob Wall. Yeah, you're still on, Steve. Sorry, I'm taking a long time with this story. No, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, I just wanted to say that. Jacob Wall is Jewish, but right. also the, the, but the anyways, girl is Jewish as well. What's that? The girl who got fired was also Jewish. Oh, okay, yeah. So she's fraternizing with anti-Semite, and she's Jewish. But to be honest, even those two items don't matter. She has the right, even if she were yeah, for sure. pure white, and these were all pure white nationalists, or, you know, white supremacists, or Jew haters, or whatever. She has the right to fraternize with them. <laughs> but, um, you know, people fall for the smear. They're liberals and don't know it. They are brainwashed and don't know it. And it's causing a lot of anger and backbiting and infighting. And that's probably even worse than um, merely falling for the racism lie. Let's say you fall for the racism lie, but you actually believe in free association, free speech, and free freedom in America then, uh, hey, he has the right to be so-called racist. He has the right to be anti-Semite. Because he's not, you know, anyways, you have the freedom. So, um, it is a shame. What do you say? So, I wanted to talk about the part of the story where, where um, I know you don't want to name names, but I'm not talking bad about him. Where, okay. uh, that, that kid, C.J. Pearson, he, he jumped into the fray. Yeah. And... This, this little kid, he's like 17 years old, but he, uh, as far as I know, he's not a white nationalist. Mm -hmm. um, and he was basically trying to de-escalate the situation because it, people were going crazy, firing yeah. people. And he was just saying that, like, uh, you know, white nationalists aren't white supremacists. They're not evil. They just, right. you know, as far as, as far as I know about white nationalism, uh, they seem to acknowledge that America is a white country and that uh, they just want to make sure that America stays majority white, like yeah. things don't change. So I don't think them, I don't, I, you know, I don't really necessarily see them as evil. And I, I think that he was just adding that basic logic, kind of like guys, you know, chill out. Right. And then, and then it's crazy to me because, you know, these, these rhinos, they, they just like, they, they say they love free speech and they say they don't want like black people on the plantation and all that, like the liberals do, but then they, they attack this kid in the nastiest way I've ever seen anybody attack somebody for free speech. Like, the liberals are pretty nasty on Twitter, but they were, like, as nasty as the liberals were. Yeah. And, um, and then the funny thing is that this kid is not even a white nationalist. <laughs> it's just like, what is going on here? C.J. Pearson, then, um, yeah, C.J. Pearson was kind of agreeing with Ali in defending... C.J. Pearson has been on the Jesse show once or twice. Um... I wouldn't call him a kid. He's a minor now. <laughs> He's Sorry, 17. Sure, That's... Yeah. So I, he used to be but anyway, yeah, yeah, he did used to be, like, pretty small. 
But, um, yeah, he's... That's fine, man. I mean, that just exposes that it's a battle of good versus evil. It's not even... You know, the the white nationalists say, or whatever they are, they say um, it's not left versus right. And that that aspect of their point, that is so true. It's actually... And it's not even really globalist versus um, nationalist. It's right versus wrong. Right would be uh, nationalist. Right would be um, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but right uh, but that's that aside. There's evil people on on all around, all over. There's imposters in the church. I would say the majority of the Chris, so-called Christian church, meaning all Christians today, most of them are imposters, not real Christians, and. So, majority of Trump supporters are probably quite flawed, and you, you can get them to turn on each other. And that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. I feel like this is a, a very—it's it's an interesting moment because I yeah. feel like it exposes, it exposes kind of that, you know, that these people are not as virtuous, you know, not necessarily on the side of the right, on the side of good. And it's funny because, like, they attack this, these people so hard— but these same people have rubbed shoulders. Like, they rub shoulders with the most degenerate and radical liberals, and they try to appease these liberals. But then when someone – and no one says anything to them. But when someone says, like, the most basic – expresses the most minimal amount of sympathy for the white nationalist cause, yeah. they, they jump like attack dogs. Like, it's – Yeah. That it's really a, exposes them. It's and a brain – It just means that they're uh, brainwashed. You, I mean, you got to – yes, they are wrong. They're ridiculous. They're – brainwashed they're evil but they are brainwashed like they're legitimately they don't realize how ridiculous it is to overreact over a white guy being so-called racist or so-called anti-semitic you know what i mean yeah it might be it might be they might be brainwashed they're overreacting um, to that but because they're trained to be biased against white people and the other the other funny thing is that the the girl who was fired um I don't know if you remember, there was a whole controversy with her because she's like a so-called Trump supporter. Um, and people thought she was a rhino because she was saying that, you know, Trump supporters are stupid. All the causes that they believe in are dumb. And then all the causes that the Democrats believe in are actually, actually matter. Um, and then the same people who are attacking uh, CJ Pearson were defending her at the time. Or the same people that are attacking her as well were defending her at the time. So huh. when she made fun of Trump supporters, they defended her. But now when she's like... Uh, you know, trying to sh- to show some kind of unity with the right, you know, uh, across the right wing, then they attack her. So yeah. it's it's unbelievable to me. I don't know. That's that's kind of all I wanted to say. Yeah, you know, it is interesting. It seems like this guy Ali um, was trying to bring people together to talk and hash out their differences and become united, as opposed to whatever. And that's what Jesse does sure. with you know talking to the, these far left radicals and these yeah so called right wing radicals. <laughs> And the thing about me is that I actually kind of, like, bought into the, you know, we're all evolving, our views are changing, and we're growing and maturing, <laughs> and I actually kind of bought into, like, the hate against that girl. Yeah. She was against Trump supporters, and I, I did buy into the hate against the other the other girl uh, who was who defended her. Uh, I don't want to name names, so... It, the Asian? It up, but, yeah, the Asian girl. Yeah. But then after this event, you know, and I'm seeing what's, what's going on, it's like, oh, you know... It's really just about unity and like you, you're trying to convince people about what's right. Yeah. It's not about like demonizing everybody. And you know what's really funny? Exposing. You know what's funny too is Twitter comes off so harsh. These people are writing these things and you, you read them as nasty, right? You said that they t- did these nasty attacks on CJ. Show the, yeah. the Periscope one where it looks like the guy on Periscope. Um, his, tw- his Periscope was titled, he was on the side of, he was, he was the one that I was quoting basically, this person. Um, he's a, I guess, a conservative guy, and he said why I, he put out this periscope after the drama had been going on for a while, and he said why I think Nick Fuentes, he's the young alt-right guy, um, who said something nasty about, about another conservative, so-called conservative, um, has the civil right to use Twitter. And he was, when I was watching him, like I was reading his tweets and I was getting mad, like annoyed, and then I watched him talk, and yes, his words were dumb, but for some reason, um, it's just kind of interesting that when you're face-to-face with the person or you see, see them, it, like, calms you down. You, like, 
okay, let's like deal with this person as a fellow human being. He's just, yes, he's an, kind of being an idiot, but you suddenly like have more patience. But w reading Twitter, it comes off so harsh, and they may not ne mean it as harshly as you're reading it. You know what I mean? Even though yeah, they are sure, promoting yeah. a dumb idea, like racist anti semite, it's a dumb idea, right? But still, uh, you don't have like the judgment puts puts them as worse than they than they really are, or something like that. I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. That is a good point. And, but the other thing I would say is that so, some people actually are really nasty in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that doesn't need to be said, but. I, I, yeah. you know. I appreciate it, Steve. Thanks for helping me cover this. Oh, no problem. Thanks for, thanks for chatting. All right. Talk to you later. You too. Bye. Uh, let me get to... Let me get to Christopher out of California. Christopher, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing, James Hake? Fine. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, you can hear me better now, right? Because I know last time I think I had a bad connection. Yeah, I hear you fine. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, last time that I spoke with you, you said that the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, was anti-Jewish. Yeah. And could you explain why you think that the ADL is anti-Jewish? I don't understand this. I have two reasons. Number one, the ADL and people like them make people like you and, um, and other people, maybe me, hate them. <laughs> And who are they? They're Jews. So that's that's one good reason, right? You you see the uh, logic uh, in that. Yeah. Two. Uh, I uh, no. Okay. Sorry. I mean, it it just that's they're one of the most evil organizations, and the stuff that they promote is so dumb. That Greenblatt, whatever his name was, um, head of yeah, the ADL, Greenblatt. he said um, he said that the term globalist is an anti-Semitic term, and all he's doing by saying that is pointing, trying to suppress the word anti-Semitic, right? I mean, pr suppress the word uh, globalist, right? But he's all, which is suppressing the truth. But he's also pointing out that most of the uh, most Jews are um, globalists <laughs> because they support either um, they support either Democrats by a margin of like seventy percent for Hillary, I think, well, or else well, they well, end up supporting well, um, like neoconism. Which is like well, well, so-called conservative, but more globalist side. And then the other, but the other reason that the ADL is anti-Jewish is because they promote victimhood, and they promote defamation of Christians, conservatives, whites, and America. And those things are against what's right. And when uh, being against what's right is against. Any group of people. So just like I said that GLAD is against gays, GLSEN, all these, all these uh, human rights campaign, all these radical homosexual groups, those are anti the human beings that happen to be so-called homosexual. Those are anti those people. But they're pretending to be for them. Just like the NAACP, which you pointed out <laughs> was founded by, I guess, Jews and blacks or whatever. I don't know. But anyways, like the point is... These organizations that pretend to be advocating on behalf of the so-called minorities, such as the ADL, such as GLAD, such as Human Rights Campaign, such as the Congressional Black Caucus, such as on and on and on, NAACP, those, all of those people are, are the worst thing for the people that they pretend to be for. Does that make sense? They're promoting the, that these people I, I, take on a victimhood mentality and hate and and hate conservatives, hate whites, hate Christians. I, I understand. I understand where you're coming from and and the point. But I must say, uh, if you're saying that the ADL is anti-Jewish, then you would probably say that the NAACP is anti-black, right? You would yes. Say that? Yep. Okay. So basically, it sounds like. Anybody that's anti-black or anti-Jewish is just really a uh, somebody that you like a bad Jew or a bad black, right? Yeah, I mean because that's, that's yeah. what it sounds mm -hmm. like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but but these organizations uh, they have one goal in mind, uh, 
to to represent and fight for and and whether it's wrong or right whether you agree with it or, or not they are definitely the idea was definitely positive jewish uh, they, they think they think a, they are they may think they are some may know that they're not they yeah, pretend no, to be they, yes when, when's the last time the adls come to the defense of a white man when, when's that happened i'm not saying that they <laughs> the, well if they were to defend a white man then they would be pro jewish <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, well, the, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, no, I understand where you're coming from now, man. I, that's why I wanted to call in, because I was getting angry at you. <laughs> you know, well, oh, okay. viewers, man, we take things personally. <laughs> so uh, you understand what I mean, though, because, because I promoting... I understand where you're coming from. I disagree with you, but I do understand where you're coming from. It makes more sense now. So you do you acknowledge or do you see that promoting victimhood and promoting the notion that this group should um, join in the smears of whites, you you think that that's a good thing for the Jews to be doing for their souls to be doing? Uh, no, absolutely not. I think it's yeah. uh, it's a, a really bad thing for them to be doing. But uh, I can understand. Um, organizations that stick up for their group, their kind. And I, like I said, last time I called, I said, I don't come at, I'm a white ethno-nationalist, I don't come at it from the perspective of, oh, damn these Jews, I hate the Jews. Okay, look, they're doing some bad things, but you know what, I want white people to be more like Jews. We need to strengthen our community. We need to strengthen our, our racial identity. This is uh, what, we but this is, for ourselves. all right, yeah, I, there's do. certain, there may be, there may be things that, th there's definitely things that whites can learn from Jews, I guess, but, um, I'm, I like Jesse's spiritual points, that's the only reason I like politics. Um, uh, I'm an anti-theist, so oh. I can't really. <laughs> did you used to, did you ever used to be liberal? Uh, yes, I was. Yeah. Man, see? I'm sensing a yeah, pattern. Um, <laughs> I started to change. I, I went from being a liberal, voted for Barack Obama twice, wow. I voted for Hillary Ouch. Clinton. <laughs> you did? So, you oh, voted yeah. for Hillary? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was that much of a liberal. Oh, and, okay. Uh, oh, okay, Donald all right. Trump, that makes so much more sense. Donald, yeah, Donald Trump, uh, when he was elected, and I don't like the guy, I don't think that he stands up for me. Uh, I never liked him when I was a liberal or now when I'm a white nationalist, I never liked him, but uh, hmm. he brought something out in the country that I didn't see before, and it was basically, it was hatred of white people. Yeah. And that Do you appreciate him me. for that? Absolutely. And yeah. I'm so grateful uh, that he was elected because it opened my eyes and I could, I could see, what, like Jesse always says, White people, you're the most hated people, <laughs> and it's true. And let Everybody's me and let people. me tell you why he brought that out, which you may agree with this, because he is one of those old school. I hate to use this word. Uh, blank hole Americans, men, that just says what he thinks is right, and that, and he doesn't. Apologize for what for saying and standing by what he thinks is right and that drives those people nuts And he's a fighter. Yeah, no, it, you, yes, absolutely. Like, okay. I don't I don't uh, necessarily agree with him. I don't necessarily think what he's standing up for uh, <laughs> He doesn't represent me and my political views, which is all about, you know, race and white people. Yeah, but He he does he does say what's on his mind and it is refreshing because we all get so sick of hearing these politicians with these right. rehearsed, you know, uh, garbage answers. What are no no answers at all? They're just you know, just talk of the platitudes. I, I want children to be happy, and <laughs> we need to make America great, and all this kind of nonsense. Like that doesn't mean anything, you know. Yeah. But he does every now and then. He does say things that I'm like, heck yeah, that's exactly what I would say. All right. <laughs> so, Very interesting, yeah. Christopher. I appreciate that. All right, man. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Hey, I'll talk to you uh, again maybe in a couple weeks. All right. I look forward to that. Take care, man. All right, brother. You Bye. Too. So interesting. Um, and you know, I kind of understand. Uh, why these people becoming brainwashed into liberalism um, turn around and do go into the white thing.
because that's what that's what you see is the attack on whites. Um, let me quickly cover this stupid liberal opinions on impeachment. Trump asked the Australian prime minister to help discredit Mueller, and he actually there was a clip that I saw of him um, talking with Australia, Ukraine, and others in order to get to the bottom of the fake scam known as the Russian conspiracy theory. But the media are pretending that the Mueller um, investigation was valid. So the New York Times says, President Trump pushed Australian Prime Minister during a recent telephone call to help Attorney General William Barr gather information for a Justice Department inquiry that Mr. Trump hopes will discredit the Mueller investigation. And so they're calling that what? Which is good for America, right? You want to know where the Mueller investigation came from, right? Why did this fake conspiracy theory about Russia come up? And they're calling that using Trump using high-level diplomacy to advance his personal political interests. Well, his personal political interests you happen to be the country's interests. You should want to know, if you're a real journalist, where that fake news came from. And so they called it, what else did they call it? So Mr. Barr, by the way, another New York Times report, Barr recruits foreign officials. He asked foreign officials to aid inquiry into the CIA and FBI activities during the 2016 election. And this FBI and CIA turned out to be anti-American, anti-Trump American spies spying on Trump under the Obama administration, by the way. Remember Trump's tweet year, uh, probably years ago. He said, oh my gosh, the Ob- Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. He ordered a sp- spying on a political opponent, ideological opponent. And Obama and Trump do not like or respect each other, nor should they. <laughs> Actually, Obama should love Trump. But, uh, yeah, they are, Obama was evil, and he put forth what Joe Arpaio called a fake birth certificate, photoshopped, and Trump looked into it, and I know one journalist, Bill O'Reilly, had looked into, like, newspapers from Hawaii back at that time, and they both, like, a couple of newspapers reported that Obama was born at that time, there at that time. So I guess he was born there, but why put out the fake birth certificate? If uh, what Joe Arpaio is saying is true, it looked true. I don't know. Um, Maybe to troll the people. Maybe to troll conservatives (laughs) is my conspiracy theory. That Obama just wanted to not release it and just kind of troll people. But according to some people, Obama took that real personally when Trump kept on looking into it. um, Because President Trump went in like 2011 or maybe earlier, he was looking into the birth certificate issue. Just like Sheriff Joe Arpaio was. Old, two old school guys, some of the best men in America. And Arpaio today, he's in his 80s, and I think he's running for office. Check him out. He's been on Jesse's show multiple times. But these people, including Obama, are anti-American. They hate Trump. If you hate Trump, you hate America. Because Trump loves America, and he's been doing what's right by it, as much as he could, I think. Um, and like I, I read to you about this AP thing, at one end of Pennsylvania Avenue, the president raged about treason, which it was when they tried to undermine him. At the other, the methodical march toward impeachment proceeded apace. Ridiculous. And then they... Um, there's uh, the Atlantic, which is a very far left outlet. This guy named David Frum in the Atlantic. He's one of the top guys at the Atlantic. Um, the Atlantic is a trash outlet. I found out about the Atlantic when I first became a producer for Jesse's show. And there was a black writer who's propped up, who's been propped up at, in the Atlantic. And I'm not going to give you his name because he refuses to come on the Jesse Lee Peterson show for years. But he's written these far-left books, trashing the cops, 
meanwhile, he knows about black on black crime and probably should know if he doesn't um, about black on white crime being way out of proportion and black on cop crime. But he still falls for the fake notion of police brutality, driving while black, and all that nonsense. And so the Atlantic propped him up, and he's been in, like, movies with, um, who's that actor? There's this black actor that I think everybody is him, (laughs) because um, they all look the same. Hillary Clinton said it, so I can say it. (laughs) Um, I don't know. What, Denzel Washington something. Right? He was shown in a movie promoting this guy's book, like reading this guy's book. Dumb. So, uh, David Frum in The Atlantic, far left, he said, During the Lewinsky scandal, Clinton focused on doing his job. Trump isn't even pretending. That's what David Frum claims in The Atlantic. Oh, please. Totally different situations. And I believe I recall, recall seeing in the chat that Clinton perjured himself, committed perjury under oath, lied. You know, he was lying like the whole time, right? He was a liar. Kind of like Obama. Um, some people say Trump is too soft. I don't know. You might be right. Certain things. Um, but Trump is fighting back and doing and continue. I bet you he's going to continue to get things done. And it doesn't take too much time. Trump does, says his piece and moves on. So they're falsely, this that guy David Frum is falsely claiming that Trump is not even pretending to do his job. Yeah, he's doing his job. He's constantly been fighting um, the red tape at the border. The red tape has been um, m- mountainous. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> because people, he's been fighting um, opposition from within his own administration and within the government and within the, the Mexicans and all of them. Have been, he's been fighting for us at the border. And people lie and say that he hasn't been doing anything. Yeah, he's been doing stuff. He's been making these executive orders and they've been declaring that unconstitutional and stuff like that or trying to undermine him. The liberal judges, the liberal rhinos, and the liberals inside of Congress and the people, the people over there, you know, some of the border patrol is even turn, has even turned on its own border patrol. That's how ridiculous it is. And then the Washington Post is fra- fantasizing about President Pelosi. That would be terrible. Oh my gosh, we would be so taken advantage of with pre- so, a so-called President Pelosi. But they're trying to traumatize you. To get you used to these ideas of, oh, remove Trump, yeah. Get used to that idea. It's a brainwashing thing. And (laughs) President Pelosi. It's ridiculous. So anyways, last quick thing about this protester who was shot. Oh, I told you about it. Um, He did it to himself. And don't side with these people because you'll notice that the media is on their side and the media is our enemy. The media is the enemy of the American people. But they are on the side of these so-called pro-democracy protesters. I kind of, you know, I'm sympathetic to them, but it's organized by the Hong Kong University Students Union. They are the ones who took the footage of this kid getting shot. Kid. College student getting shot. I think he's a college student. Hong Kong University Students Union. When has any university, modern day university, been, or much less a student's union or a union of any kind been for what's right for the most part these people are not for what's right and so you know not that you can do anything about it but don't fall for this stuff so I'm not for China either but I think Trump is going to handle both of them right alright take care guys